Now, every year, the great and the good from the oil and the energy industry gather in London for the Oil Council's World Assembly. We're here to find out what's in it for them and why, if you're a player, you've got to be here. We're joined by the chairman of the Oil Council, Ross Campbell. Ross, it, it's quite expensive to come here. You get a lot of big names and small names as well. What do they get out of it? Well, firstly, Nigel, thanks so much for inviting me to be here. I think the Council's job is to try and connect oil and gas with finance and investment. Now, connectivity in those three communities has always been, I suppose, at the behest of the banks. And recently, the banks have been a little bit disjointed and they haven't had their most successful years. Our remit is to come in, collect and connect larger communities of oil and gas executives. What do they get by coming here? It's simply the largest gathering of financiers, investors and analysts in the world. And those are the investors we represent and it's our job to bring them new investment opportunities. Yeah, I suppose it, it, maybe it's a bit like Davos in, in, in the sense that somebody once said to me about Davos that, you know, I know it's been successful when I go away with a, an enormous number of business cards and the beginnings of a couple of deals. Absolutely. People are here for connectivity, for business development. That is their first major priority. There is intelligence gathering and there is thought leadership and there are ways to benchmark your company against your peer group. But essentially it's business development. What leads are you going to get here? What joint ventures are you going to get here that are going to enable your business to achieve the growth that you want to do? And it's very viable here at the council because we have such a large gathering of senior executives. Now some of the thought leadership that's going on here, some of the discussions that are taking place in the plenary sessions is all about collaboration and partnerships and, and finding new ways to, to, to operate. Um, why are they having to do that now? What, what, are, what are your people telling you about why they, it's even more important than ever to get connections? I think there's a, a, a various reasons to that um, answer, Nigel. I think the more independent companies that are coming to the fore, especially those perhaps based by private equity and sovereign wealth funds, they themselves have fantastic management teams who are very focused, if you will, on doing business development. They don't necessarily have the connectivity into the large groups of other investors. They need to make sure they have that second tier of business development that will gather growth. What we're trying to do with the council is essentially get every single echelon of the financial markets to pull together to try and give people a complete capital solution on mapping out their growth in the way forward. And that's in terms of the buying and the sell community. Where are they getting most value for their money? And I think understanding the essence of that valuation process is something that we can bring to the council to them in terms of intelligence. And so for us, it's simply making sure that the best companies have the best advice in front of the best investment community. So what is the intelligence you're getting from this particular gathering you know, against the backdrop of a weakening oil price, a lot of political instability? Um, there's some quite big issues out there. What's keeping your delegates awake at night? Uh, a few things, and uh, I think one of the major things is capital availability. I think what we've noticed here in London, um, especially in this region, the drying up of the public equity markets. I think private equity is starting to slow its way back into this community. It's still very much an immature community in comparison to its North American counterparts. And sovereign wealth money is drip feeding itself into London marketplace. Now, if we compare that, I suppose, to the Asian Pacific marketplace, we're seeing the Asian Pacific markets and the public markets becoming a lot more liquid, a lot more open to exploration in comparison to here. So I think financial worries are certainly at the forefront of every mines organisation here. Valuations in terms of how they're managing that with shareholders. I think at the moment there has been a huge value deconstruction, um, destruction sorry, with some of the companies here and it's very disarming, and very alarming for their investors to try and understand how they can really back a future growth plan when they have inadvertently lost 30% of their shareholder offer no, no, no news whatsoever. The weakening commodity prices is certainly an issue that we've been hearing from the past couple of sessions and we'll no doubt hear from for the next couple of days. And there's a lot of pain, I think, in the marketplace and I think that pain will have to be extended and that will have to naturally go through a cycle for us to come at the end with their new growth. So it does seem that this is a kind of pace, almost a therapeutic environment where they can, they can share that pain and, and, and come to some solutions. But you're also expanding as well. I mean, growth on, is on the agenda for you in terms of where you're actually operating and where you're putting on events like this. It is. We have to follow the capital. 
And where that capital is in relation to the world, we have to try and put our oil and gas community in front of it. Now, there are pockets of capital across the world that people have no access to and no idea how to really explore and dig into. Um, Beijing, for example, in the Chinese marketplace is a phenomenal area for growth in this world marketplace, but itself is very isolated to the international community. And itself is very invisible in the capital markets in terms of how companies can properly get into China and access either asset management money, private equity or sovereign wealth. Who are these decision makers and, and where are they going to put their money? So for us, we have to move to that market. As such, we're going to Beijing next year to host an assembly with our Chinese counterparts where we will welcome our international community to Beijing for them not only to meet Chinese oil and gas companies for joint ventures for M&A opportunities, but to also meet the Chinese capital markets, which I believe will play a very big role in the future development of our industry. We then mirror that, I suppose, with Calgary and doing more growth in Calgary where the LNG marketplace is developing, but we're also seeing a lot of um, domestic investment in Calgary playing out. And there's also a lot of domestic investment coming in from North America over the border. So for us, we have to go with the capital as North America's growth for ourselves and so is Asia. And just finally, where are the new places that are perhaps people aren't aware of where the new capital is beginning to flow? You mentioned China, you mentioned Calgary as well, but where else? Um, for myself personally, I mean, I, I would actually stick a little pinprick in uh, Malaysia. I mean, Malaysia has got some fantastic companies there. The money coming down from Petronas in the private sector has tripled in the past few years. The Malaysian Bourse is getting a few companies there IPOing. There's a lot of family money that's come now from a couple of decades of investment there. And we're seeing similar movements actually in Indonesia. I think some of the more traditional Western bases of North America are still strong, but for domestic investment. And Australia seems to have dried up. So we're looking more to these kind of um, frontier companies like Malaysia, Philippines and Indonesia as possible capital sources for new investment. Right. Ross Campbell, thank you very much indeed for joining us, the Chairman of the All Council. Thank you, Nigel.